Ladies and gentlemen, your next fight is a professional mixed martial arts fight in the lightweight division. Making his way to the cage, he will fight out of the blue corner, Stefan Defala. Moving into the professional ranks here, we got a lightweight bout on tap, Stephen Defal, fighting out of Dania Beach, Florida. American top team, Baga, a BJJ purple belt under Rodrigo Ramos and Rodrigo Fernando. Now for all the fans watching around the world, one thing to know is that when we step into the professionals, the rules do change slightly. Elbows are allowed on the ground, knee to the head, and also head kicks. Exactly, and you know, a guy just in his third pro fight, coming up all the way from Florida to Ohio, that's a, you know, a, a good way to test yourself early in your career. But one thing we know as well is that if he's training out of American Top Team, he is training with some savages down there. Picked up a win in his pro debut over Robin White, his first round TKO victory. Guy who uh, played football in high school and was a 185 pound middle linebacker. And uh, saw uh, some old highlight tapes of him actually. It's easier to find his football highlights than uh, some MMA highlights, but guy had like a truck and in football and does the same in MMA. But one thing we know is the guys who train on uh, with the constant intensity behind their training, they carry a lot of weight when they start moving. And if he can uh, transition that same speed from his football days into his punches, it's, it's going to be a bad night for anybody that steps in there with him. Said he predicts a second round finish, whether it be a TKO or submission, to foul in the cage, bring out his opponent. And making his way to fight out of the red corner, James Pfeiffer. Fighting out of the red corner out of Norwalk, Ohio, James Pfeiffer. 0-1 on his pro career, but that one loss against Jose Martinez back at Pinnacle FC 15 in December of 2016. And I actually called that fight in. James was very quick to say, you know, a lot of people, it was a very, very close fight, and some people scored that fight for me, some people scored that fight for Jose, and he said, you know what, look where that guy is now, going and fighting on the Ultimate Fighter. You know, that was a, a very close fight against a tough guy. You know, so he has an 0-1 record on his career, but uh, not exactly your prototypical 0-1 fighter. I don't know, he's coming in with some, some great experience, and. You know, we'll see what he can do against this young guy. If he can put if he can put this guy away, he's definitely gonna establish a bigger name for himself. Take a look here at the tail of the tape. The foul two years older. Fight for one inch taller, and of course the one and one pro record for DeFal. 0 and one for Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer, 29 years old though. I mean still young. He's been fighting seems like forever. Uh, made his amateur debut all the way back in 2010 and went 10 and one as an amateur before making a jump to the pro ranks and hasn't fought since December of 2016, a little over a year layoff and just said, hey, I was I was in the gym every single day. It just it was hard for me to find fights. Nobody wants to fight an 0-1 hungry fighter, uh, you know, and, and potentially take a loss to a guy, you know, without a win on his record, so. Well, one thing we, we know is that uh, the, being at 29 years old, man, you're probably just stepping into your prime. So we, we're yet to see the best of uh, James Pfeiffer. Exactly, and always been a very, very well-rounded fighter. Has that high school wrestling background, turning out of Iron and Soul with Justin Labeni. Got some teammates, Joey Rojas, Kyle Booth, Ty Me. All three of those young, hungry, amateur fighters. Uh, and some of the guys from that gym starting to make their way into the pro ranks. But uh, training with, you know, uh, kind of being a, kind of a leader in the gym, I would assume, for James Pfeiffer. The one thing that's going to be a little bit difficult for Pfeiffer is uh, Stephen DeFall is training with some real savages down there at American Top Team. And when you got pro caliber fighters that are in the UFC consistently and, uh, and winning belts all the time, you know, you got to have some... Uh, and have some steam behind you and people pushing you. So I'd like to see how Pfeiffer can do against his big name. Pfeiffer in the cage. Josh signs with the official introduction. This fight is scheduled for three five minute rounds. Introducing first to my left, 
fighting out of the blue corner with a professional record of one win and one loss. He fights for American Top Team. He weighed in at 155 and a half pounds from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Stephen Dufour. And to my right, he's fighting out of the red corner. He has a professional record of zero wins and one loss. He fights for Iron and Soul MMA, and he weighed in at 155 pounds. James the Merc Pfeiffer. Your referee in charge will be Dan Maul. Lightweight action here. Honor Fighting Championship three, Stephen DeFall in the red and black, James Pfeiffer in the black and white. Dan Maltz is the referee. These are some big lightweights. Neither one of these guys stopped pacing during those introductions. And here we go, guys. They were ready to go. Start with an inside kick. <laughs> From Pfeiffer, DeFall with the overhand tie and a nice knee. Yeah, looking to had the clinch. Was Looks like he was trying to get this fight to the ground, but it's actually Pfeiffer who has the Pressure up against the cage here early on. The fall doing the right thing, hooking the leg. Nice wizard. Beautiful job right up here in front of us. Have to take down good control by the fall. Pfeiffer, the good oh. athlete, back to his feet. Got to watch those, those knees to the head. Pfeiffer yeah. with good control, throwing a nice head kick. Some smile there after uh, the fall landed a punch. Beautiful knee. By default. The clinch here again. This takes a lot out of you, the clinch. Pfeiffer controlling the arm from the other side. Very nice technique. That's going to allow him to open up those knees. But it also gives it the exchange for him to catch some, too. Nice shot to the body there from Defal. Looks to try to follow that up with another one. Pfeiffer landing some shots of his own. I'd like to see which fighter disengages and begins to throw strikes, but at this level, there's so many tools, it's so dangerous to, to disengage and be reckless. Wouldn't be surprised to see one of these guys try to throw an elbow over the top or even off a spin, of a release. Or even a spin, just because of the way the arms are being controlled. Good right nice. hand. Uh, landed clean there for Pfeiffer. Just on the upper cheek. Beautiful takedown by, by James Pfeiffer. Looking to try to work, get in half guard here, but we see the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu purple belt, Steven DeFall, working the high guard here off of his back. And you can see that, that, that skill. He right away went to put feet on hips and all controlling with the overhooks on the arm, and he continues to swim his arm running to avoid taking strikes to the face. One thing that a lot of these young guys can learn from is knowing that you need to swim arms through when you're on your back. Uh, position and control first. You want to be safe first. Yeah, and you also see the hips of Defal off of the mat. But good job by Pfeiffer keeping that head in his face and pushing him around. That's going to make him uncomfortable and possibly cause him to open up position. And that might give uh, Pfeiffer the opportunity to start posturing up and rain down some strikes. A little over halfway through round number one here. And if you have never had somebody's head grind into your face, it sucks, let me tell you. So it's like it's a very evenly matched fight thus far in round number one. Nice short elbow on the inside by James Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer, you know, I'm not sure if he's looking to try to pass here to land strikes or if he wants to try to play top game and maybe score some points just off of positioning. One thing also that happened, guys, that I forgot to mention is that the rounds changed. We're no longer in the three-minute rounds. We're now in the five-minute rounds. The foul trying to elevate there with that right leg. Looking for the sweep. Quite for though, the good wrestling base. Able to keep those hips in, not get swept. But good control by the foul. Not very good. Trying to take his back here. Got plenty of time to work. This is a taxing fight, these grinding sty uh, styles. He's trying James to hook, uh, open the leg to pull him down. 
Looks like a maybe a little bit of a cut on the forehead of Defal. Not sure if that was from one of those punches in the guard or where that came from. Could be from the constant head grinding as well. There's oh, right beautiful hand right hand. hand. He's got to watch with that tie clinch. Piper Somebody lost a mouthpiece. Got the, another takedown here for James Pfeiffer. I think Pfeiffer lost his mouthpiece. Now looking to try to pass here. But the foul. Pfeiffer now trying to take his back and does. Back to the feet. Oh, no water on it. That is Interesting. Nasty. The uh, referee starts them from, a, from the center of the cage there. And those guys standing in front of each other and trading. Beautiful knee from James Pfeiffer. Good head positioning here again from Pfeiffer. Nice knee there. Interesting that he threw the rear knee yeah, across all the way across his body. I thought the same thing, but I've seen Paul Felder do that in his amateur, uh, in his pro career, very early on in his pro career. He knocked some people out with those. Felder has some of the nastiest knees, I think, in all of MMA. A little bit harder to anticipate that back knee coming as well. Nice round there. I think maybe a round in the books for James Pfeiffer. Now you're starting to see how the pros get down. You're starting to see a little bit more of a, of a paced fight, very technical. They're not as rushed to get things done. Pfeiffer had a couple of takedowns in that round. Nice positioning, nice top game. Looked like he controlled the clinch up against the cage. One thing you start to notice is as, as the, the ranks start getting higher and the pros start getting a little bit sharper, you'll notice that they know how to take their time. And that's very, very important because they've got 15 minutes to work. And so you don't want to gas yourself out in the first round and not be able to withstand any kind of vicious onslaughts that could come towards your way. The replay here. It was that nice overhand right. That was the one of the cleanest strikes there in the round was for that right hand from James Pfeiffer and then follows it up with the double leg. Nice job scoring some points there for James Pfeiffer. One of the things I do want to say is uh, Early on in his career, there were some questions about cardio for James Pfeiffer. He would coast in some of his fights and wins, and that has not been the case in his oh, last couple of fights right. he has. Good takedown. Way to use the cage as a springboard. He has shown some impressive cardio in his fights, and we'll see if that 15 months out of the cage, if the cardio is still there. Now, one thing uh, Pfeiffer's got to be careful is Defal starting to control that, that left arm. And if he can, he's going to spin and try to throw that right leg over top and engage in uh, trying to set up a triangle position. Yeah, he's got that left foot in the hips, on the hip of James Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer, though, one of the things, you know, just a good wrestler, good top game. He's very used to this position, very comfortable in this position. One. Even against a guy, you know, a, a good jiu-jitsu guy, it's going to be hard to submit James Pfeiffer off of your back. Well, one thing I'd like to see from Default is being a little bit more active in the way he's using his jiu-jitsu. I know it's a little bit difficult when James Pfeiffer's putting so much pressure, but he's not trying to push off. And that's kind of risky because you're getting your head pushed on against the fence and you're not really able to mount any kind of offense from his positions. Yeah, hard to score points from off of your back. It looks like he has this left knee in, maybe looking for a scissor sweep. And the problem is with your head pinned up against the cage, if Pfeiffer decides to start dropping real, real hard shots with those elbows like he is, there's no space for his head to move. So when there's no give behind you, you're taking all that blunt force right to the face. So I'm surprised Pfeiffer hasn't tried to throw more elbows, especially with how good of a job the foul is doing of tying him up, throwing those short elbows on the inside. You see Pfeiffer staying busy here on the ground. That fence is unforgiving too. Nice. Very almost. Sweet there. But good job on Pfeiffer being all over him again. Good job in the scramble there by Pfeiffer. Landed on his feet in that that sweep attempt. Pfeiffer is all over him like white on rice. And that takes a lot of energy to keep continuously being on the defensive. Even though he's not eating a lot of punishment in terms of strikes, he's always trying to get the guy off of the top of him, especially a guy with a heavy top game like James Pfeiffer. 
The interesting, uh, interesting thing that uh, Default's doing is controlling one arm and pushing off. Oh, beautiful up kick. And maybe yeah, Pfeiffer's got to watch. Eating that up kick. But see, I don't understand. You're controlling the wrist and you're trying to push off, but not trying to back your butt up against the cage, which will allow you to wall walk. It's interesting to do that. I mean, Especially uh, right by that cage pad where it's a little bit easier to wall walk. And with two rounds, it seems like he's two rounds down right now. If, if he doesn't, uh, one round down, excuse me, if he doesn't start to get anything off, he's going to be two, down, two rounds down. And again, see, he's just content laying here, putting his feet on the hips. He needs to push off, explode, and try to stand up. It's not good for Defoe right now. There's a big punch over the top there from James Pfeiffer. Minute 45 here in round number two. The problem with fighting off of your back it, it, with strikes uh, and striking yourself is that it's very difficult to have any kind of true power from there. Stand up here from the ref. And now Pfeiffer tries to go for the takedown. Defoe. Oh, Defoe, yeah. I apologize. Yeah, he was trying to be the aggressor, but Pfeiffer didn't even really have to, have to get his hips out because that shot was not set up very well. James now looking for the single leg here up against the cage. Beautiful work. Defal, you know, looked like he was a little too uh, happy just to try to go for that Kimura and end up on his back here again. And again, feet on the hips is a good thing if you're using them to, to push, push and explode. If not, all you're doing is stalling in a position and allowing a guy who's got heavy top pressure to start raining down strikes on you. That's very dangerous. Or even just try to elevate. Is this a, a question of Defal really just trying to wait for Pfeiffer to make a mistake and capitalize on it. This is where you have to start transitioning and using your jiu-jitsu properly for MMA. Because in, 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 uh, on the mats, it's okay to put feet on hips and start waiting for positions, but once you start adding strikes and allow, uh, allowing those damaging blows to get through, it becomes a very different fight. Jiu-jitsu does not work the same anymore. Looked like Defal was trying to push that right arm through, maybe looking for a triangle, but Pfeiffer doing a good job here, just staying heavy. He's got to watch that up kick. He's got to watch that up kick. Limiting any offense here from Steven Defal. Fire Pfeiffer, I just back up and start throwing some strikes. Just maybe peppering up those legs with some, uh, some kicks. Looks like it's two rounds in the bag here for James Pfeiffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to the third and final round. Now one question, is there is there no stool rule in Ohio? I don't know. I notice that a lot of these pro fighters aren't getting stool. Personally, when I fight, I don't like to sit down in between rounds. But having them go all the way down to the ground where their butt's touching and then try to lift up is taking energy in a taxi fight already. Looks like the fall corner was telling him to use your length and your strikes to try to keep him at bay. Well, we haven't seen we haven't seen much of the striking game of the fall at all. And, and right away again. Head kick there from Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer using his strikes to open up his wrestling. Beautiful work. Good job pulling him off the cage and finishing that takedown. Nice job turning the corner there. A lot more of the same. Right in front of our broadcast position. Pfeiffer is controlling very good, using that head to control with pressure and putting a lot, a lot of heavy chest pressure down, not allowing the fall to move. The punch from the bottom there. Looks like a bloody nose now for James Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer's got to watch out for that Kimura. Now beautiful work by, by Steven Defall trying to trying to get that Kimura. He's got the wrist. Have, he's gonna have to pull there. it in and then pull it up. He's gonna have to pull it in and pull it up in order to get it. Now Pfeiffer's doing the right thing by keeping that leg, that, that hand tucked really deep in between his thigh. And also because these guys are slippery, it seems like Defal's having a little bit of trouble controlling that grip. Dropping that left shoulder as well. Now one thing Defal could do is throw that, that left leg over top of the shoulder and instead start switching for a, a triangle or throw the right leg and disengage. 
Pfeiffer doing a good job here. But now, looks like the foul looks like he has his hips out. This might be, looks like Pfeiffer is in a lot more trouble than he was before. Pfeiffer needs to just step over top onto uh, DeFall's, uh, forgive me, DeFall's left leg. When, when DeFall left that leg a little bit low, Pfeiffer should have just stepped over top of his leg and spun, which would have allowed to open up the position and maybe allow his arm to extend for an arm bar. Looks like he's got his hands clapped now. Gonna be a lot harder for DeFall to finish this Kimura. Looks like his, also his leg is blocking. There is a counter here if DeFall can step, uh, if uh, Pfeiffer can step over top. Yeah, Pfeiffer doing a good job though. Still keeping that lay, that uh, left arm tucked. Now good work by De, by uh, Default by pushing in with his right leg. He's going to try to create space by pushing his hips back to allow the arms, but he no longer has the arm locked. Great Pfeiffer work by now James Pfeiffer. Here. They're right in the front of us in the corner now. Pfeiffer now taking his back. Now going to be really hard for DeFall to do anything here from this position. I don't know if I've ever seen a Kimura finish from this position. It's going to be difficult because he's got too, he's not enough uh, space. He, now if he, he was just in the has center of, control. If he was in the center of the octagon, maybe it would be a little bit easier, but he can't do it from that position. Beautiful way to get to the back. Now one thing Pfeiffer's going to start looking for is trying to sink those hooks in, and there goes got the first the right one. Hook in. And there's the second one. Now let's see if he can start flattening out uh, Stephen DeFault. Minute 53 left in this fight. Been all James Pfeiffer so far. But again, it's going to be very difficult because they're so close to the cage. Unless Pfeiffer can spin a little bit more towards his right to flatten him out, it's going to be difficult to do because, you, as you can notice, his head is getting stuck into the cage. Now, he might have a little bit of a better angle now to do it. Pfeiffer looked like he was complaining about something. Maybe he was, he was holding the glove. Or... And there, he's trying to get under the face. He's got it more as a face crank. Yeah, not completely locked. It's going to be hard to finish a pro with a, a neck crank like that. That's just really uncomfortable. Oh, it's it's it stinks. One thing I'd like to see is Pfeiffer try to push a little bit more with his legs. Instead of going so high with his chest, if he could just kind of push back with his legs and try to flatten out uh, the fall. But he's controlling well and I'm in a very dominant position. 50 seconds left in the fight. Now, Stephen DeFall has the opportunity now to Looks stand like and try to shake him. A lot him. deeper. Well, still not completely still okay, it's just chin. a face crank. Very uncomfortable, though. He is squeezing hard, though. Now, DeFall still got 32 seconds. It shouldn't burn out his arms. Maybe just control the position a little bit and try to make sure that he doesn't spin. Now look at the ankle, he's trying to, he, he's got that ankle in very bad position. Oh. Right for now, breathing heavily, still has the back here of Steven DeFall. Ten Good. seconds in this fight. Looks like James Pfeiffer are gonna take home his first pro win. Dominant, dominant performance by James Pfeiffer. Good job, and that's exactly what he wanted to do there. Pfeiffer went right out of the cage. <laughs> Looked like he was trying to go to the back. Ready to hit the showers. Gonna get the official result here momentarily. Pfeiffer in the, in the cage doing push-ups now. Uh, showing he's still got some, uh, still got some cardio. Got the official result here from Josh Signs. <laughs> Life is doing a little dance. This man is excited. Once again, fight fans, let's give a big round of applause to Stephen and James for giving us 15 minutes of their time so we can have a great show.
After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your winner by unanimous decision in the red corner, James the Merc Pfeiffer. James Pfeiffer, I know it's been a long time coming, man. 15 months out of the cage, we're gonna look right over here. 15 months out of the cage, came back, you fought a really, really tough guy, but you fought your fight, kept the wrestling, and one thing that we really liked over there in the commentary booth was, even though you look you, like you probably had two rounds in the bag, third round, 30 seconds left, you're still trying to finish that fight. Hey, man, I just want to, for real, give a shout out to the camp I'm with now. Um, coming in this fight, I had a lot off my first fight. I went against Jose Martinez, and you guys saw him earlier up here. He went on the ultimate fighter, so shout out to him. Most people hate when they see someone that they got in the cage with and they make it further. That motivated me because it showed that I'm right there with the best of them and I need to just prove it. And that starts by consistency, training, and a regime. I stayed on it with my coach, Coach Justin, Coach Bill. I stayed with it with my teammates. Like I said, my first fight's against Jose Martinez. I don't think it gets any harder than that, for real. So I had all that going into this match. My girlfriend kept me on a meal plan. Kept me going, kept me motivated throughout the days. Um, all my venture, where's my venture people from work? All the people I work with, push-ups, we do them every day. Me and Abe about hitting like 400 a day at work just to get ready. So there's a lot of little things that I did that made a big difference to this fight. And I just want to keep improving each time I step in the cage. Exactly, James Pfeiffer picking up his first professional victory at Honor Fighting Championship. Congratulations to James Pfeiffer on his very first win as a professional.